What's going on all you gamers? If you'd like some helpful tips on how to make the most of Wastelands 3, then stay tuned. That's coming up next. Welcome back all you guys and girls. So if you've been subscribed to the channel for a little while, you'll probably know that I've been covering a lot of Wastelands 3 content at the moment. It's a really good game, really fun, there's a lot to do and there's a lot of replayability to it because there's just a lot of different things you can actually do to your characters and in the game itself a lot more than you actually can cover in one playthrough but the thing is you can struggle you can struggle and you can make mistakes that really really devastate you so I'm going to give you a few hints and tips that hopefully make your playthroughs a little bit easier one thing to always make sure you've got is ammo and scrap. These are both basically your friend. You need both of them. They go hand in hand. Scrap and junk are basically what you do to sell and get money and that's what you actually need to buy the ammo. Without ammo you are not going to get very far in this game. That being said I would recommend have at least one and probably only one to be fair melee character in your team and that way, if things do kind of hit the fan, you've still got someone as a bit of backup. Don't be afraid to explore. Some of the best items in this game can be found pretty much as soon as you've got your Kodiak. The better gear is as soon as it's upgraded a little bit, but you can get some really, really good stuff just by exploring. So create a save file so that you're not gonna um, ruin anything and go out and have a little adventure, see what you can find and odds are you'll find something that will definitely help out your team and even if you don't, just the fighting alone will get you a little bit of resources and gear you up as well as give you XP. Make sure that your game is diversive and by that I basically mean make sure your team is very well thought out and planned. So, for example, you would not want three members in your team with shotguns. They're all going to be using the same ammo type. They're going to have close range. They're going to struggle if you're against a team of snipers. You're going to want to diversify a little bit. So make sure that you've got stats on different things. So, for example, your skills. Make sure your skills are spread out. There are 16 skills in the game and you have six characters, four of which are your created characters and two of which will be your companions. Try to spread them out as you're gonna need roughly two to three skills on each character that are not the actual fighting skills or combat skills. So try to diversify. You're gonna want one person who's got a lot of one, one person who's got a lot of another, and make sure they've most of them have different weapons as such. And like I said, a melee character is always a good idea as a backup. Don't rush into combat. Try to make sure that you get the upper hand, either through sneaky stuff or basically initiating combat. Make sure you have the upper hand, otherwise they are going to hit you first and hit you hard. You making sure that you initiate combat can be the complete difference between you absolutely annihilating the enemy or having to start over. Now this one's a tip that I wish I knew at the very start and that is create a character solely for weapon modding and armor modding. There is absolutely no point using this on your characters. Create one at HQ and keep them back there and whenever you need to upgrade something use them by putting them in your team. If you put it on your characters that you're actually using in the game, it will just take away from some of the skills that you could be using to get further on in the game. The same kind of applies to barter. You could do exactly the same really. There's not many situations when barter comes into play, except most of the time it is for just making sure you can actually sell and buy things at a better level. So you could hold on to stuff and then just either come back to the trader when you have them in your team or sell the stuff when you have them in the team and that would work out better for you at the start of the game. If you're playing the game, 
and you absolutely have zero idea of what path you want to choose for your characters, you really don't know what they do, you really don't know what kind of attributes they're going to get, what kind of skills they're going to unlock, then why not play for a little while, and then with a created character, why not put a skill into each one of the skills, just one singly, such as this, and that way it will basically mean that you can then see every single perk that they will be able to unlock. It will just help you to have a little flick through and to work out what kind of a character that you may want to create. This is really good if you've got a little way through the campaign and you've kind of decided one of your characters isn't how you want them to be and you're really not sure what you want in its place. This way you can see all of the top tier stuff and work out what kind of a gun you want to put on them and what kind of skills they uh, skills and perks they're going to begin. Remember to get that really easy XP. For example, you could smash down 90% of the doors in this game with your melee character, and you're very tempted to do it, it's really easy. However, every time you open it with picklock, you'll get XP. The exact same happens for the explosives. Every time you disable a trap, you get XP. If you just shoot at it, you just get rid of the trap. It's easy XP if you've got the skills in your team, make it work for you and use it as a bit of an advantage to get that easy XP. It may sound stupid because you're probably going to end up loving a few characters more than others, but always make sure you use the right tool for the job, or right weapon for the job. For example, if you've got that boss sitting at the back of the map, don't try to run him into combat. Don't try to run a shotgun guy right out into the middle of the field to get the kill because he's your favourite character. Use your sniper. You might be able to one-shot them from a really good distance and stay completely safe. The same goes for if you're being attacked by a big group of fleshy ads. Have you got a flamethrower guy? Have you got a rocket guy? Take them out with that. Use each weapon to its full potential. Now remember, unlike attributes, your skills actually cost more to upgrade as you go further up the tree. So for example, the level 10 skill is going to cost a lot more to upgrade from 9 to 10, I believe that's 6 cost, just on that one, than it would from 1 to 2. So if you find skill books, try to hold off on using them really early on, and instead use them a little bit later or mid game just so that you save a little bit on your skill points. Not all attributes are created equal. Don't think just because with skills and perks and weapons you're going to want to be diversifying on everything because on some builds, maybe so, but a lot of the times you're going to want a standardized or a really, really nice build to kind of fall back on. For example, without coordination, you're going to have really, really low AP points. So you're not going to be able to move very far. You may not be able to get a shot off with your favorite gun if you have moved. It's going to kind of suck a little bit. So make sure you spec out your character exactly how you need to be. Coordination, awareness, and intelligence are probably the three standard ones that you will want to invest in. If you want to go off spec a little bit, then have a little look around, because you can use others, such as Charisma, which puts the strike rate up, which can make, which can make a really strong uh, special build as such, special skill build as such. But at most times you will be wanting coordination, awareness, and intelligence, because that will just be the fallback kind of build especially whereas Awareness gives you 35% extra damage and extra hit chance. That's going to be in most builds. Don't be afraid to not always push up the map. If you're worried about getting massacred, put some of your players in ambush. That way, when they start making their way to you, a classic example is your snipers. If you've got one or two sniper, or you've got two characters that have got long range, put them in ambush and that way when the enemy gets their turn you're going to hit them as they're coming towards you. Don't always put yourself out of position. 
remember, hiding and surviving is a lot better than running up the map like a nutbag and getting absolutely massacred. Have a few save slots. I would recommend, even though this auto saves, have a few save slots just in case you think you've made a bit of a boo-boo. It is better to be able to reload and to kind of save the day as such than to have overwritten one and then find out that you cannot get that beloved bit of armor that you want because you blew up a whole town. Finally, if you have completely, completely and utterly ruined your characters, which can quite easily happen to be perfectly honest, if you've got all the skills in the wrong place, you don't like their attributes, don't worry, don't start the game again, go back to your Ranger HQ, create a character exactly the same as your beloved character that you have, and just put the skills etc where you would like to have them. As you play the game, you're going to learn a little bit more, you're going to see what works, you're going to see what you enjoy, and you're going to have fun while you're doing it. But if you're not having fun because that character is absolutely awful in your eyes, don't start again, go back, refresh it all by just creating the same character over again or slightly changing him to your whim and just put the skills etc where you would like to this time. That way you won't have to ruin all of your progress. Right guys and girls, that's pretty much pretty much everything from me. I uh, just thought I'd try and give you a few pearls of wisdom but most of you probably know all of this anyway but it's just to help out a few people that haven't actually done any of the game yet or are thinking about starting it up or just don't know everything that there is to it. As always, I hope this has helped. Um, if you liked it, then hit that like button because that definitely helps the channel. Um, if you'd like to subscribe, then I'll be bringing you all the latest and greatest Xbox and Xbox Series X stuff as soon as it's out. As always, take care. I'll see you on the next day.